morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for April 6th, 2025. High pressure dominating the nation this morning and that's leading to some very cool, calm and dry conditions across much of South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, parts of Queensland and also parts of Western Australia. Things really are expected to remain calm but we do have some turbulent weather on the cards now. Offshore from Western Australia where a tropical cyclone could form in the 14 day forecast period. Showers expected to be widespread across the New South Wales coastline and then showers and heavy rainfall extending up into North Queensland. Let's dive straight into the forecast right now with what's going to be happening initially. We're going to start things off up in far north Queensland. A few showers and thunderstorms scattered across the Cape York Peninsula this morning and there were some widespread stronger thunderstorms last night with severe thunderstorms with heavy rainfall and damaging winds outside of Georgetown and uh, Corumba into the Gulf Country. We do have some heavier falls currently moving into the Palm Island and the Hinchbrook Island sort of area as well and we have had some isolated bands of heavy rainfall moving up into the Innisfail area overnight and this is the general trend of the weather that we're going to be seeing over the next five to ten days. Rainfall is going to be here, but it's going to be very scattered, very isolated, and it could be heavier at times. You can see throughout the remainder of today, showers streaming in from the southeast as, as winds begin to change direction for good now. It looks like those uh, winds will be coming out of the southeast pretty much from here on out for the next six to eight months until the wet season returns. Again, we see those northwesterlies. Uh, rainfall is expected to be widespread in the form of showers and thunderstorms through the Gulf uh, Country area and up into the Cape York Peninsula. A few showers and thunderstorms expected to extend up north into the uh, Daintree Rainforest as well through tomorrow and into tomorrow night. Showers and thunderstorms will ease off through Monday and you can see continuing through Tuesday and Wednesday showers and thunderstorms really not existent through far north Queensland. They will be here and there and a few drops of rainfall can be expected but in the way of heavy rainfall that doesn't return until at least Thursday night and we won't be seeing some heavier falls through Friday and in towards Saturday but again they're quick to leave as well. This general trend in the weather scene that we're seeing up in far north Queensland when the southeasterlies return is when we're talking about the transition period from the wet season over towards the dry season so you'll be able to notice that the nights are now beginning to get a little bit cooler up in far north Queensland. The edge is taken off in terms of the humidity and the heat up in far north Queensland during the day. And this will also go for north Queensland as well. Those temperatures will now begin to drop off a little bit there. Uh, but the rainfall is much fewer and much further between. The showers will not be as consistent. They will be a lot more uh, kind of in between each other. And we might be going days upon days without rainfall up in far north Queensland. That's not to worry. They've had plenty of rainfall. In fact, they've had about three times what they will normally get in a wet season over the last 30 years. Years. So the rainfall has been excessive up there across some locations. And we're leaving wet season 24-25 with up to 5 metres of rainfall in the rain gauge so far. Just this calendar year alone for locations around Rollingston and Paluma Dam. So some really significant rainfall accumulations have been reported. And that's just how wet this wet season has been. Very significant rainfall, that is for sure. In terms of those rainfall accumulations, especially this weekend, we could be seeing a couple of hundred millimetres fall around the Daintree Rainforest and also down into the northern parts of the Cassowary Coast. But 14-day rainfall accumulations, apart from that, not getting too much heavier. You can see anywhere between 50 to 150 millimetres can be expected along the Casper Coast and between 80 up to about 200 millimetres along the Daintree Rainforest. Of course, the wettest locations will likely pick up more rainfall than that, but it is now exclusively based into the Daintree Rainforest and the Casper Coast cans not expecting more than a couple of millimetres of rainfall and even down towards Ingham and Townsville rainfall accumulations now really beginning to drop off and along the North Queensland coastline there will be a few showers here and there down around the Mackay area, especially inland out towards the catchment for the Pioneer River and a few showers are also expected around the Yapuna and the Rockhampton sort of area, but in terms of significant rainfall accumulations over the next 14 days, and for the next six months, really, they're now beginning to pipe down for good for far north Queensland. And I can, and I can say that with a high degree of confidence, because once we get uh, out towards late April, the chances of a significant rainfall event, which is not showing itself on the long-range forecast, really does begin to drop off. And in terms of even rumbles of activity off that, whilst we do have a bit of a tropical low developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria, it's not consistent between major forecast modelling so we will have to wait and see with what we can be expecting into the later parts of April right now. But my money is a 30-70 split between getting rainfall and not getting rainfall at all, at all uh, pretty much from now on over the next six months. Of course, that can change to so stick with us over the next couple of days. But in terms of tropical low slash tropical cyclone activity up in far north Queensland, it's done and dusted for the most part. And in terms of significant rainfall events, it is also looking to be pretty much done and dusted. It's not done and dusted, though, for southeast Queensland and New South Wales. We are now in East Coast low season, that's for sure, into the transition period towards winter, where we can see some pretty strong winter storms offshore. Uh, in contrast to that, though, this high pressure ridge that we've seen build across interior parts of the nation has kept things really cold this morning. It's gone down to two zero or below zero for some of the locations that are a little bit more elevated. Young has gone down below zero overnight. We've got out towards Captain's Flat, a zero degree morning as well. And some cooler days uh, are expected, generally speaking, over the next couple of weeks as well, especially as we head into the wintry periods. Uh, as we push this forecast modeling forward though, you 
can see out towards this weekend. We will likely see a bit of moisture coming in from the east as the low pressure system begins to very broadly build in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Uh, and that will drag down some moisture from the north and we could be seeing some rainfall then really begin to build in the southern parts of the Coral Sea and the northern parts of the Tasman. This will be driven into the coast of New South Wales and uh, Queensland by a high pressure ridge that's going to be dominating the scene over in New Zealand and through the Tasman Sea in general. And we could be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations develop as a result just from this high pressure ridge funneling in rainfall from the southern parts of the Coral Sea and the northern parts of the Tasman Sea. And you can see some widespread showers expected to be extending down from Fraser Island right down to Sydney uh, throughout the time period that will inc include later on this coming week and through next weekend. And you can see some heavier falls can be expected as a result, especially in towards next working week. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations really beginning to build, especially between Sydney down towards bigger, including around Ulladulla and Wollongong. And some heavier falls also expected up the north central coast of New South Wales as well. Now, whilst we're not 100% certain whether this rainfall will begin to materialise, we might even see an east coast low out of it. Who knows at this point in time, considering the conditions are very favourable for low pressure system development offshore from Queensland and New South Wales in this type of uh, transition period, we could still be looking at some pretty significant rainfall and certainly something worth looking at over the next couple of days. The rainfall doesn't look too heavy, at least stunning things off uh, throughout the later parts of this coming work week, but it could get progressively heavier through next weekend and into next fortnight, and we could be seeing some very heavy falls between the 12th out to about the 17th of April around the Sydney, or especially down towards the southern parts of Sydney through Wollongong, Oladola, Naruma, and down towards Malakuta. The forecast modelling right now is calling for some pretty big numbers, up around that 200 millimetre mark outside of Wollongong and Sydney, in fact, slightly more for some locations, and widespread falls between 80 to 150 millimetres expected on the coast, and again, higher accumulations expected in the mountainous regions adjacent to the coastline, and some heavy falls also expected up the coastline with up to 200 millimetres around the Barrington Tops, and between 80 to 120 millimetres expected up around the Lismore and the Coffs Harbour area, where some pretty heavy falls can fall from weather events like this. So if we do see an east coast low develop uh, around next weekend, we will be seeing some very significant rainfall accumulations, but I would also just like to note that this isn't reciprocated between major forecast modelling at this point in time, so there is still a high degree of uncertainty. What is quite concerning is the axis is calling for, for some pretty significant rainfall as well, so it definitely looks like towards the uh, next parts of next weekend, we might be seeing low pressure combined with high pressure over in the Tasman Sea, and that will funnel some showers ashore for New South Wales and Queensland. The nature of this is still very uncertain and very much up in arms right now, and we don't exactly know exactly what to expect at this point in time. So any questions or comments or concerns, leave them in the comments section down below. I'd be more than happy to check them out and take a look and answer for you down there throughout the course of today. But yeah, certainly a bit of a heads up for New South Wales and Queensland, especially through the later parts of this week. Some showers will be coming your way. They're not likely to be too heavy, but dependent on the movement of low pressure systems and dependent on how strong this high pressure ridge does build over New Zealand, we could be seeing some much heavier rainfall through next weekend and into next fortnight, which would be good news because these locations here certainly calling out for a little bit of rainfall, especially into the southeastern parts of New South Wales as they head into their true wet season right now. Some rainfall down there would be very welcome, that's for sure. Uh, and drought impacted communities across the eastern half of, New, uh, of Victoria as well would also likely pick up some healthy falls, although not to the degree that New South Wales would. But for the most part, rainfall is not welcome in Queensland, and especially for the north of New South Wales as well. Rainfall can steer well clear of there and people would be well and truly fine. Normally, I would head over to the tropics right now, but whilst we're in this general location, let's talk about the drought over in South Australia and Victoria. It's been really significant and quite heartbreaking. Whilst they've had record-breaking rainfall up in southwestern Queensland, the drought in South Australia and Victoria is just uh, unfathomable across some locations, especially through the Air Peninsula. They are truly in their driest months right now, so again, rainfall on the cards is non-existent. You can see South Australia, the wettest locations down onto the southeastern corner of the uh, state. Whilst we have been seeing some contradicting numbers over the last couple of uh, forecast runs, you can see it's pretty much set in stone out, just a couple of drops of rainfall uh, until we get out towards May. And it's the same story for the western half of Victoria as well. Rainfall accumulation is really not looking good there. Whilst we head into a, a negative southern annular mode, which is going to bring some much drier and calmer conditions across South Australia and Victoria. Cooler nights, dry conditions, it's not the stuff that the farmers want to see, especially as we head in towards the farming season down in South Australia and Victoria. The rainfall there is much needed, more than ever pretty much at this time of the year. But unfortunately, even into the long range forecast modeling, there's nothing decent on the cards down there. And they're truly heading into some pretty significant drought like conditions down in South Australia and especially across Western Victoria this time. And unfortunately, like I've said multiple times in the last couple of videos, and especially this forecast update, there is no relief in sight. And just before we get up into the tropics and the tropical forecast for Western Australia, in stark contrast to what's happening in South Australia, the flooding situation ongoing for Queensland. And this is going to be a situation that we're going to be talking about for the next
the next couple of weeks, out towards the next couple of months, most likely, with the rainfall and the water not expected to reach Lake Eyre until at least early May at this point. So still a lot of flooding still to go, especially for the extreme southwestern corners of Queensland around the Birdsville area, uh, south of the Diamantina Lakes, and then into the southwestern corner of Queensland, which uh, borders New South Wales. Some, still some pretty significant flooding still ongoing in those locations as well. Thankfully, those waters now beginning to drop for bigger population centres, uh, such as Winton and Windora, Quilpie and Adavale. The rainfall there has, of course, cleared out over the last couple of days, but the water level is now really beginning to clear out as well, which is great news indeed. It's a cool, calm, dry picture across the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia as well. At least for the next couple of days, you can see rainfall not piping up across the Northern Territory until next weekend. By the looks of things, we will likely be seeing some enhanced rainfall patterns across the northwestern corners of the Northern Territory and into the northeastern corners of the Northern Territory as well. Major forecast models are still suggesting the potential development of a tropical cyclone towards the later parts of this week. You can see the GFS forecast model calling for a tropical load to get its act together really quickly in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and as such rapid intensification looks to ensue pretty quickly as it heads through the Timor Sea and then into the warm waters of WA. I don't really think the GFS forecast is taking into account the damage that the storm will suffer if it goes over Timor. Not so much of the damage that Timor will suffer but the fact that Timor is just a volcanic island and as such has some pretty tall mountains for this tropical cyclone to move over Timor it'd be like moving over a cheese grater and uh, this system here will likely be completely ripped apart and will have to redevelop completely over the West Australian waters but it shouldn't have a problem doing that if we do see a tropical low move over WA waters we're not going to see a problem in terms of intensification very favourable conditions indeed as it heads towards the WA coastline but thankfully it looks like now as we head into the later parts of tropical cyclone season once it heads south of Broome Winch it looks to really pick itself up and this system will struggle as a result. The GFS are also, also calling for another tropical spin up well offshore from the uh, Timor coastline and then actually close to Melville Island and the Northern Territory bringing it into the Northern Territory later on into the forecast period but again I take that with a very heavy pinch of salt and even that first system offshore from the WA coastline right now I take with a very heavy pinch of salt as you can see on the Eastern Air forecast nothing really begins to develop in the WA waters here and it's a dry picture offshore from Western Australia in terms of tropical cyclone activity now tropical cyclone activity can still be expected and is certainly still very reasonable this time of the year offshore from the WA coastline it's not unheard of that's for sure powerful tropical cyclones in April. They happen more or less every single year, actually. So there's certainly some precedence and certainly some merit to the forecast from the GFS, but at this point in time, it's very difficult to believe either forecast modeling, considering there has been for the last couple of days some incredible consistency between the Eastern Bluff and the GFS and some massive contradictions as well. You can see the Eastern Bluff calling for squat, and it has been for the last couple of days, and the GFS calling for a pretty significant tropical cyclone, all things considered. One thing's for sure is that WA impacts right now do not look likely and whilst we don't exactly know where this tropical cyclone is going to go or what it is going to do in terms of specifics, the impact side of things looks to be really insignificant at this time for the WA coastline. It could just be a couple of gusty winds and a couple of gusty showers moving through some locations down around the Exmouth and the Caratha sort of area, but again, not likely to be a significant tropical cyclone impact, and if it is going to become a significant tropical cyclone impact, we'll have many days of warning across the WA coastline, four or five to be precise. So there's no need to be panicking whilst there is going to be rumbles of activity and potentially a tropical cyclone developing by Friday or Saturday this coming uh, weekend. We could be certainly seeing uh, a tropical cyclone offshore from the WA coastline, but in terms of expected impacts to the West Australian areas, it's not expected to be significant whatsoever. And if that does change, there'll be plenty of warning, that's for sure. And it's not looking likely that it's going to change at this point in time either. So for the most part, it looks like tropical season 24-25 looks to be more or less done for Western Australia in terms of tropical cyclone activity and impacts. Down at the southwest of Western Australia, it's been a pretty interesting se uh, scene and a pretty interesting setup all things considered. We did have some rainfall yesterday. Perth uh, walked away with just a couple of drops of rainfall in the gauge but some significant rainfall accumulations have been reported out into the weed belt especially last night with some thunderstorms moving through the York and the northern area. They were pretty impressive that's for sure. I saw the lightning crashing over there at about 9 o'clock so if you were looking over to the east of Perth uh, at about 9 o'clock last night you're certainly treated to a very healthy light show that's for sure. It's going to be a bit of a game of roulette as to whether or not it's going to rain today across the Perth metro area. Most forecasts are tipping on the side of it's not going to rain. It's going to just be a partly cloudy and albeit quite a humid day, but we will be seeing some showers and storms developing in the afternoon over the hills, and it's still a game of, you know, they could form into the eastern suburbs. So again, it's an interesting forecast setup right now, powered by a low pressure system that's going to disintegrate throughout the course of today and into tomorrow offshore from Perth. It also looks like a couple of showers will build through Tuesday morning and into Wednesday uh, across the southwest of Western Australia. Tuesday morning looks like the next chance of rainfall for the Perth metro area. Uh, 
uh, and then that rainfall does clear out through Wednesday and into Thursday before a couple more showers expected through Friday and in towards Saturday as another low pressure system develops and it looks like we might get our first real cold front through next weekend uh, as we get out towards mid-April for the southwest corner of Western Australia and that kind of starts a cold front train by the looks of things. Rainfall pretty consistent on the forecast throughout the next work, uh, ne well not next week, uh, next fortnight between the 14th out to about the 21st of April across the southwest of Western Australia which could give way to some healthy rainfall accumulations that's for sure. So take a look at the forecast modelling right now. Not too much is expected on top of what we've had over the next couple of days but we could be seeing falls up to 50 millimetres across the southwest capes if a couple of cold fronts do materialise. Put it this way, that's very healthy rainfall and very much welcome at this time of the year again as we head, in, head into our cropping season of 2025. So again, some pretty healthy rainfall accumulations and some healthy numbers especially under the eastern parts of the wheat belt and some good numbers also expected on the southwest capes but in terms of rainfall for Perth, I wouldn't be getting your hopes up at this point in time. I think I might be safe to wash my car today. Uh, the way it's gone for the last couple of weeks is if I wash my car on a chance of rain, it's going to rain. So if you're looking forward to rain, I'm going to wash my car today and it looks like it's going to rain then. So if you're hopeful for rainfall, uh, generally speaking, if I wash my car, it's going to rain across the Perth metro area. That's just how my luck rolls, it seems to be. Anyways, that is all that I have time for in today's forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it informative. And if you have, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribing to the channel. Get used to it because there's not going to be an awful lot to talk about over the next six months. So if you're only interested in tropical weather, there's going to be plenty to talk about as we get out towards September and October. So stick around for that. But in terms of tropical weather forecasts and daily updates that are going to be dominated by Queensland rainfall situation, there's not going to be an awful lot of that over the next six months. And again, that is a very good thing indeed because they are sick of the rainfall up in North Queensland. That's for sure. And it give me a much needed break as well. So everybody is excited for that. That's for sure. That is all that I have time for today. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.